definitely could do that again. Um, oh, it was it was a really good pay per view overall. Um, I mean, I mean, you start smooth. I mean, you've seen it, so if you want if you want to start off, give your opinions because I actually have opinions on this because I've watched it. Unlike the other two, I've actually seen this one. Uh, I really enjoyed the triple threat tag match. Um, personally. Yeah, I did. It was it was nuts. Um, I mean, look, look but before we get to that, I, I think we, we should do a shout out for Noam Dar and Travis Banks. It was a good match. It didn't feel like an opener for a, for a, a takeover or even just uh, just for a pay per view. It was. It took a little while to get going. The end the end sequence was very interesting and, and nice to see. And shout out to Noam for getting a win. But it. Um, it felt like the wrong match to start a pay per view. It felt like a match that's needed to simmer a crowd down before a main event. Yeah, I think it was yeah. totally the wrong place on the card. I don't know whether it was the fact that it took me like seven hours to get the network to work because it was just being a piece of shit. Yeah, I I really didn't enjoy that match. I don't know whether it's because I had to watch it in stages because the network wouldn't actually let me watch the match properly. Also, I don't think the crowd were that into it either. The, the crowd weren't into it at all. It was very flat. It was very, very slow to get into. You're right. It's the thing that you put on after like something that's just popped people halfway through like a, a tag game, match <laughs> so that you can then get to the main event and get everybody back on their feet for the main event you need to give them time to sort of you know have a bit of a break which yeah. is why wrestlemania i have a big problems with because they just pop the boys over and over and people were knackered by the end of it yeah this felt like the thing that you put in between say kofi winning the title and becky winning the title this is the kind of match you put yeah, in that I fully spot. agree and again, I, I don't. It wasn't a terrible match at all. It was. It was a perfectly well executed, very technical match to start with, and then I mean, as it got, it got a bit more heavy with the strikes, and the crowd sort of woke up a bit towards the end. And yeah, other than that, it, it wasn't bad. It just didn't feel quite right. It was, just solid. It was a solid match, but yeah, yeah, positioning on the card kind of made it seem less so. I'd say tag match was fucking insane, though. It was. Um, I Before... go on, Matt. Before the tag match, we had Cesaro versus Ilya Dragunov. Oh, of we did. course. We did, yeah. Oh, of course. I completely that, forgot about that. I was a bit disappointed that it was Dragunov, but fuck me. They've made they've made a bit of a star out of him, haven't they? Jesus. He's quality. Like, I mm. first saw Dragunov in progress about 12 yeah, months I, ago. Yeah, I saw, I, saw him, I saw his stuff with Pete Dunne. And he's fucking quality. I, I love Dragunov. Um, and this was, again, another cracking match. I, I really enjoyed this. I think this... If they hadn't had Cesaro, as nobody knew who was fighting him, I think this probably would have gone on first. It probably would have worked better as a first match. Yeah, it was very, very quick. A lot, a lot of uh, it was very high, act, very active match, wasn't it? It was a lot, yeah, yeah a lot of high strikes and oh, just a forty times swing by mistake. So I can't hear you now. It was literally <laughs> a forty time yeah, 40, swing, forty spin, spin thing. Was, was it thirty-one times? Wasn't it or something? Forty. 40. Four, they counted 40 in the crowd. But I, yeah, think it was 40, 40, I think it was 40 seconds more than 40 times. Yeah. It was mad, um, though. Still mad literally, off. that man... The bit that annoyed me throughout the night of NXT TakeOver, and I'm sorry, Cardiff, this is kind of a dig at you, you cannot keep chanting, are you watching Vince McMahon? I'm sorry, yes, you might think that he's out of touch, but at the end of the day... I'm bored of that chant. You need to stop. It's only been yeah, twice they've done it. They did it three times on NXT Cardiff. I'm sure it was three times. It, it felt like it. Maybe I was not paying I attention. I don't remember that. I remember but, hearing it once on Cardiff Live, but they've done it twice in total. Not just them, but at, at, at takeovers. They, they did it um, They did it during Pete Dunne last time, I think, didn't they? Yeah, they definitely did it during Cesaro's match and the Walter Tyler Bate match. I heard it twice. Just just fuck yeah, no, you're right. Of course, of course. I don't say, just don't see why. Because he doesn't care about NXT. No, he doesn't fucking... I doubt he watched this. No, he got his PR, his PR team replied on social media. Yeah, exactly. That's about straight it. on it. But the thing, the thing with me is, we know Cesaro can go. We've not seen it for a while. This is for those hardcore fans who watch Raw and SmackDown every week and go, oh, Cesaro's just in, lost in the shuffle, and then he comes and does a match like this, you go, oh yeah, I remember, Cesaro's actually pretty good. Yeah, that's the point. 
I mean, I'm you. You could have put fucking three call cool, anyone out of the to the three quarters of the main roster in that match, and they could still go. Yeah. yeah. Or, or or do the Cesaro job. However, I do think they could potentially send Cesaro down to NXT UK. Never, never going to happen. I th- I would like to see I him go to NXT when it goes to a two weekly, a two hours of weekly television show. I'd like already. to see Cesaro go across to there that and challenge that sense. title because I th- I think you could have somebody who can't talk, which with all the will in the world, Cesaro can't talk. I think you can have somebody like that on a show if you're if you're going to have that as your top quality wrestling not all about all of the sports entertainy bits you know there'll be bits and bobs of it but it doesn't have to be full sports entertainy and i think if they go down that route with nxt it'll be a great show and cesaro would be perfect to challenge adam cole or gargano or champy when he comes back or anybody like that i think he'd be he'd be perfect in there in oh. that oh yeah i fully agree i um that's that's the the, the beauty of this um of this uh, NXT situation now is you could have Cesaro on there. You could have. I'm, I'm not. It sounds ridiculous, but you could have fucking Heath Slater go in a challenge. You you could, but you know, you could just see how, see how they. I mean, they'll lose to the likes of Velveteen Dream or whoever. But you could have Heath Slater get twenty minutes on a, as as an, as an individual in a match. That'd be fantastic. You could have Chad Gable go over there and and fireably win a title. You could. And and that that's where it's good fun. In terms of NXT UK, no, I don't. Uh, NXT UK is its own separate thing, and I don't think it should. It it doesn't seem right doing that. I think it's going to become part of the tradition that an American N- or uh, someone from the NXTs uh, or the quote unquote main roster goes back to NXT UK every time there's a takeover. I'm fine with that being a tradition. I mean, it was Finn Balor, now it's Cesaro. That's fine. You know, you could throw... I mean, I don't think it needs to be a British wrestler. It doesn't need to be Pete Dunne or Tyler Bate or anyone like that. But you could bring in... I don't know, you, you, you could viably send... I don't know, Shelton Benjamin. Shelton Benjamin is a classic example, because he can fucking go. Or you could you could send Drew McIntyre. Now, that would make sense. Mm. Um, have a half an hour match on there. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, talk. We've talked about it briefly, but we'll get into it now. Flash Morgan Webster, Mark Andrews, uh, winning the tag team titles. I called this on the predictions because I thought they would need face champions. Um, I fucking I, didn't. I did I called. I, <laughs> I just want to point out: out of the two pay per views that we did predictions for, I got four correct. <laughs> four chins. That. Let me see. That's five. That's what out of twelve matches. No, Total? more than that. Way more than that. How many uh, was on all out? There was there was six on NXT UK. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Six out of, uh, four out of sixteen. Brilliant! That's a fantastic result. Great <laughs> achievement, top lads. Absolute scenes. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I owe money, but never mind. So um, yeah, I was. It was a fantastic match. Uh, I. I because because obviously I had my prediction of Grizzled Young Vets. I was still trying to get you know I was willing them on to win it, but that Mark Andrews they they have got a star in their hands there, uh, in their hands they got they, the Mark Andrews is a fucking star. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Flash not so much. I personally, I, I he's not twenty nine. I don't give a fuck what his bio says. That guy is in his <laughs> mid thirties. He's late thirties, uh, or, or he's been through some shit in his life. I'm sorry, but there is no way he looks like he looks like an older version of Jay from In Between Us. There is no way he is like four, That's yeah, a quality show. twenty nine. He is an old man. Mm. The the bit that I liked about this match was the, the the way that they got around the ending. Like that is, I pop like we've a probably, motherfucker. We've probably seen it before in some other matches, but that was totally unexpected. Uh, no, that that was due to camera angles because you didn't see um, Flash climb up. You didn't see was it Flash or Mark Andrews? One of the two. You didn't see him climb Andrews. up. You didn't see the climb up. So, or you did, or there wasn't even a pop from the fans when he was climbing up. You didn't see it until no. you saw the shooting star curves. Like, oh shit! In hell, I popped like a motherfucker for it. It got yeah. me. Uh, I got kayfabe to fuck for most of this pay per view, and I'm fine with that. I totally accept that. But at the end of the day, it is a bit of a show for me. I'm still trying to, you know, keep the entertainment going. So I'm shouting yeah. for everything. But it was 
It was a fantastic match. Every single team played their role perfectly. It got to the point where I was convinced Gallus were going to win it because they were they were well out of the ring mm. for a long time. Yes, so I'm they thinking were. They, they they're coming in stealing it surely, and then Grizzled John Vet to get knocked out, and then there'd be there'd be Gallus in the ring with the Welsh guys, and then you're thinking. Jesus, I think I think Russell John Vets are gonna come in and, and steal this at the end, which is what I wanted. So I was like, come on, come on. And um, yeah, again, fantastic match. I think I gave it four four and three quarter stars because it was just high octane, incredibly it, it felt like a different match. It felt like a match I'd not seen before. Mm, and yeah, I like that. I completely that. agree. Three polar opposite teams in every sense of the word. Um it meshed perfectly. The thing is though, I think I think this. I know Gallus are a three-piece kind of team. Yes, the Coffee Brothers and that other guy. I think, <laughs> yeah, I th- my Wolfgang. Yeah, of course. Um, I think you need to put if you're going to have a legit tag team. I think the brothers need to be back together, personally. But, that's but they just... like having coffee in big spots, don't they? I mean, he he, he wrestled Mastiff on this. He was mm. he was record for the title last time. Yeah, and he true. It was a really botchy main event last time, if you remember it. It was fucking awful. Oh god, it was, wasn't it? They 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 kept falling off the top rope, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they did. They did the same spot three times, and he fell off the top rope the wrong <laughs> way every single time. Yeah, Chin. even Pete Dunn's like, "Fuck me, man! Come on!" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I. Um, I really enjoyed the Dave Mastiff and Joe oh, match, though. No, no, you cannot use a cricket bat like they use. Like, I don't mind you using it like they use a fucking uh, a sledgehammer where you put your hand over the end and poke someone with it. No. But you can't just swing a cricket bat at somebody. <laughs> That's illegal. I loved it. I, I absolutely loved it. At the time, right, I just want to point this out. At the time, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling it at the start. I mean, I, I, I was like... All right, well, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, to be fair, and I then, was half watching it as well. And then, because cause it was, cause I was still euphoric after that ridiculous tag match and the pop from the boys and the fans going, bat shit. And then, and then at the start, you have well, you have an Irish whip into the ropes and it just, and the, the top turnbuckle flings off and breaks. I got kayfabe for a second and I was like, well, no, because thinking about it, Mastis attacking Coffee with the end of the turnbuckle. So clearly that's been set up. It was funny, though, and it was something I've not seen in a long time. It's yeah, a, that's it's a very fun. indie thing now, I'm sure. And then, yeah, just the cricket bat. Fuck me. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I were a sports I direct special. Fucking... I uh, yeah, I don't like that. You and, felt like, that, and the snapping of a pool cue over his back as well. Like, yeah, wrestling's like, fake, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I mean, fuck you well. There's yeah. nothing about Mastiff that's fake. That cunt is big. <laughs> There's nothing about taking a cricket back to the bat to the back that's fake. It if somebody swings it like that, it fucking hurts. I'm wondering whether yeah. the bat was knocked in or not. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> It can, no, no, he's been it knocked in now. on his fucking back, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, I like that they went to the, like, through the crowd and they got to the um, commentary table. There was a really good visual behind them when you got the lights shining on them and just get the silhouettes of them two wrestling around with each other. Yeah. That was really good. The only thing that fucked me off was the, the, the ending in the match was toilet. The final spot in that match was toilet. Yeah, and they fell off. Well, no, well, yeah, the fall off was a bit weak, but Joe Coffey won by kicking the uh, the gig bag around, the gig box. I, I don't mind that. No, I thought it was shit. After everything that they'd fought over, it was yeah, but, shit. Yeah, but, but if like, you think about it this way, Joe Coffey is a massive heel. If he's kicking that, if he's doing that, that's a hit, that's a dick move, isn't it, really? I guess, yeah, but, but at the same time, I watch it and I was going... In, uh, it, it just felt like a letdown for an ending. It felt like it was missing one final spot. It, ne- it needed that right, one final yeah. one to kill it off. And uh, e- even if it was just a finishing move on the outside, or, 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 or from where they were, Coffee, or say, say Massive just gets up, Coffee hits whatever his finishing move is, and then jumps on him from a, from a bit of height. And then that kills it. And then, then I'm fine with it at that point. That's definitive. That's that done. But, mm. you know, it's fine. It was okay that it's just that, that ending just seemed a little bit off for me. But hey, you know, it was a decent match. Very entertaining. 
cricket yeah. bat spots. I, we um, need more cricket bat spots in future. No, 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 I don't want any more cricket bat spots. I like, I genuinely want them to vomit. And also, one, what was it? One of them was, um, I'm pretty sure there was like a back body drop onto like onto like the pool cues and the pool and the pool, pool balls as pool well. Ball. Yeah, you, that you must have killed. The ball. Like, yeah, it's like standing on Lego. Oh, it's just no. It's standing on Lego. It's like it's like being a. Like, it's, it's like, like being a rock. Back dropped on a fucking god. Yeah. It's like band drop on the god. That's what it was. Uh, and then we had Tony Storm versus. Um, hey, you're right. uh, that was, I am shit. I'm, I'm going to shit. Yeah, miserable. completely agree. It was, it was bollocks. It was crap. Completely agree. It was trash. It Why was, so was Tony Storm crying in the first? She was season? crying all the way through. I mean, has, she, has Natalia been teaching her? <laughs> was gurning the whole fucking way through it. I, I just, it was shite. It, it was the wrong, like, as much as I like Kaylee Ray, I think she's quite a good wrestler from when I've seen her in the May Young Classic. But, I mean, she's not the person that fucking run that division. Um, it's fine. Then Tony, just Tony Storm, Storm. Like, you can't bring Tony Storm and Rhea Ripley both to NXT at the same time. Yes, you can. Because you'll just confuse people because they'll go, oh, the blonde, blonde Australian one, and they'll go, well, which one? Because there's two of them now. You don't bring them at exactly the same time unless you're just going to do that feud again, which was a, an incredible feud. But or you I, just have Tony Storm off telly for a few weeks and then because because NXT is going to two hours, they haven't got enough women to fill up that slot. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I yeah, I I just this match was pretty crap, and the fact that Tony Storm was crying all the way. I'm through convinced it, she was she was carrying an injury during that match. Well, she she was in. She had to pull out of a WXW show the week before, didn't yeah, she? Or two um, weeks it, it didn't seem right. And it was a re- it was an completely unexpected finish. Yeah, it was out of nowhere. It was, yeah, I, I didn't like it. At it was all. shite. It was. It was a fucking off. It was the second worst match. No, third worst match of the weekend for me. Looking at my star rate. <laughs> well, we'll get to we'll get to those ones later because yeah. I assume they're all out ones. <laughs> there, there's two two matches in all out that I gave less than the two and three quarter stars I gave Tony Minus Storm. Five Kaylee. stars. <laughs> uh, um, okay, fine. Let that that happen, and then we what happened next? Big week? strong boy. Oh my are we, god! Are we going to talk about it and then do the questions? Yeah, we'll talk yeah. about it and do the questions. Yeah. And then. Big okay. strong boy, oh. absolute unit. The fact that he kicked out at one from a power bomb, like nearly towards the end of the match, I, I, like, I legitimately what? screamed when that happened. What? Now, luckily, Mrs. K was out because I'd have got the shit kicked out of me. <laughs> but I legitimately screamed when uh, when Tyler Bate kicked out at one. Wet, uh, during that power one, but before before all of that, because th- this this is a long match. This was fifty minutes, something something like fifty oh, minutes. It was an incredibly yeah. long match, and it was a thoroughly entertaining match. That th- it was built. It was it's a David versus Goliath premise basically, <laughs> but except David can pick up Goliath apparently and slam him, <laughs> and can do, can do a Tyler Driver ninety seven. Yeah. He can do a Tyler Tyler Driver ninety seven on him, so you know, good old David. But uh, it was just phenomenal. I it was storytelling in a way that I'd not seen done to that level and to that degree ever. Because mm. we all knew that, that Tyler Bates' story is his big strong boy and always has been and always will be big big strong boy. But I never thought that he would legitimately be able to pick Walter up. He did. He gave him the spin as well, didn't he? A little bit. I know he tried, and then he cut, and his back gave in. So, uh, so I I um, had this a little bit spoiled by the fact that I watched Progress Wembley, where these two fought last year, and a lot of the spots were very similar. Oh, I'm um, sure. I'm sure. It wasn't it, the match was nowhere near as long. They weren't all of the matches, but like I knew he would be able to to lift Walter up like that. But the the match itself was just in incredible i think it was probably the best match of the weekend that's what i like to hear well Um, that leads us into the question because the question from paul 
is where exactly does Walter versus Bait rank in terms of match rate uh, ratings or rankings? He thinks it's one of the best he's ever seen. He's not actually seen any Kenny Omega versus Akada trilogy, but does it deserve to be talked about in the same conversation as those types of yes. matches? Definitely. I completely... Um, you think no? For, for the simple reason that I think I've seen better matches than this on an NXT TakeOver. I don't think I've seen better matches than Akada versus Omega on an NXT TakeOver. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, get, I get what you're saying, but it, it's, it's, whether, it's not whether they're better than them, it's whether they can be talked in the same sort of vein as them. I, yeah, I if, you, if, you, if you have, if like, God-tier tier matches... I think God-tier is up there, and I think this is probably next tier. Down. I think this is, like... And that's only because I, I would have a very, very tiny god tier of maybe five to ten matches max. And I think this would fall just underneath it. Question, would Sa- would Sasha versus Bailey be in that god tier? I have not seen Sasha versus Bailey in NXT. Go and watch that, man. <laughs> it's still won't put, it still won't put it in god tier, though. I'd put it in god tier because of, of the story that lead up to it. It's god tier for me. Mm. But... The, the, the back to the match. It's just it was everything was worked out perfectly except there was one major major fuck quite early on in this match, and it it was to do with a power bomb against the turnbuckle from the outside, which looked fucking grim. Because he didn't quite throw. Was, Walter misjudged this, but he, he he was held him up to do to clearly like power bomb him again, uh, sort of back power bomb him against the, the hardest part of the ring, so he could slide down. Yeah, and he, he, he didn't. There slide was a down. complete misjudgment, and Tyler Bate hit his head on the ring post, the back, and the apron, and the, apron and the floor. He got three yeah. concussions in one move, <laughs> and and I just want to point out that for the next five minutes. The entire of my chat and myself con- included were convinced that that is the match over because that looked absolutely fucking grim. Um, yeah. The the plus side is that it was clearly designed to be a move that was going to slow Tyler Bate down. So then Walter's offense afterwards was just going to be more grinding him down rather than anything like high octane. So that's useful. So at least. So at least Tyler Bay wasn't. It was sort of treated quite gingerly for a couple of minutes, and then once you know, they clearly had a discussion in the match, and Tyler said, "I'm better. I'm okay. Or I'm feeling all right now." So then Walt was able to go back to work in the head and the neck, and that's okay. Yeah, because there was a massive lull, wasn't there? After there was that? a lull for a few minutes, and that's fine. But it's understandable to have taken that bump and to have not died. Yeah. Um, you know, fair fucks at that point, to be honest. And I, I mean. I was convinced twice that Tyler Bate was winning it when he hit when he hit the Tyler driver and then went and did this whatever his fucking spinny shit off the top rope was. I was convinced he was going to win the match after he got he got a very close two count. Mm. And there were a lot of times where I was convinced this match was over and there was still like 15 minutes left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's the downside to watching it back is that you know how long's left of the match. I, I wasn't touching anything. I was just oh, watching okay. it. I, I didn't poke the screen because I had to watch it on my iPad because I couldn't physically watch it on yeah, the desktop. Yeah. The audio was 67 seconds out. Jesus Christ. I, it started off at 13 and by like my fourth go at attempting to watch it, it was 67 seconds out, so I stopped. Bothering. Fucking network is atrocious at the minute. I just can't. The uh, the only the only way you can watch those matches if it's if it's within sort of twenty four forty eight hours after the match. The only way you can watch it is if you go back and find a live version or go back and w- when they do a live replay of it. It's the only way you can watch it after two days or so. It's almost like the processing is completed, so it can actually keep the audio in sync. But it's it's yeah. fucking trash. I'm sorry, it's absolute trash. Yeah. Um. Anyway, sorry. As you were. Um, that power bomb, that power bomb where he kicked out at one, that because uh, that to me is oh my god he's hulking up. That's it. This is it. This is it. Mm. Clothesline. Ah, oh, you son of a bitch. One, two, three. Fucking brilliant. Yeah, because it makes you think he's going to do it. No, I was, conv- I was convinced that this is it. Big strong boy. Oh, bye. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't have cared if if it, if it was to do with predictions. I, I wouldn't have cared because it's worth it. It'd have been so worth it to see him win that.